Okay, boys and girls, happy Monday. Today is May 11th. And for reading today, our skill is dialogue. Dialogue helps move the story along. So you're gonna use Little Red Riding Hood. You will need an electronic device with sound, the Little Red Riding Hood Read Aloud, functions of dialogue chart, a fiction book from home, and there is no submission today. You're gonna just practice. So dialogue has many functions in a story. Dialogue tells us characters' feelings and opinions, relationships between characters. It also helps us to move through scenes in a story and to make predictions. So remember, dialogue is when your characters are speaking and they use quotation marks, okay? So today, um, there is nothing to submit today for reading, no submission. For writing, your skill is the solution. You're gonna be solving your problem. You will need an electronic device with sound and your Google slide. A solution to the problem in your story should not be one quick sentence. You have to, once again, you have to stretch it. Ways to stretch out the solution include adding descriptive details, dialogue, humor, a victory by your main character, right? So we don't want it to just be one quick sentence and they lived happily ever after at the end. So we wanna stretch it out, okay? Remember, you also, once you put your solution, you know, a good tip is to add on that extended ending. If you wanna have some sort of a decision that your character made, you know, a memory, a wish, feeling, right? Think about all the parts of that. That could also be added on after your solution to kind of stretch it out even further. That's a good tip. Foundations, long A words. You're gonna be sorting today. So you need an electronic device with sound, um, your Google slide, and there are four different ways that we can get a long A sound in words. So I want you to think of um, A could be acorn, A, acorn, A. Then you have your A consonant E, like grape, your AI, pain, AY, day. So they all say the A sound. So you're gonna have an activity today where you're gonna be sorting out your long A sounds. For math, we're gonna be doing part two of our partial sums. I'm gonna show you the first part of the video today. Um, I recorded a video for you. It is a little bit longer, it's about 13 minutes because um, I really just wanna show you like several examples of this next step of partial sums. So we take it a little bit further using expanded form. So today we're gonna to try to not draw the base 10 blocks. If at first you need to, Go right ahead. I know it's it's because it's easy to see that picture. But now instead of drawing the base 10 box, we're going to use expanded form or expanded notation instead. And if you forgot what that means, I'm going to show you in the video. Okay. So you need an electronic device with sound. Um, your either printed out workbook page or you could just do it right on line paper. Another way to solve addition problems using partial sums is by using expanded form. Remember, expanded forms means we are expanding or stretching out the numbers. So remember 67, we break up our tens, we break up our ones, 60 plus seven, okay? I'll show you more in the, in the video. And this week in science, we're gonna be working on habitats, animal habitats. So a habitat is a place where an animal chooses to live. Animals choose a habitat where they have all the tools needed to survive. So you need an electronic device with sound, and there is a Habitat Animal Atlas video for you to watch, um, IXL links, okay? So this is gonna be for the week, so I will we'll check that out together. So we'll head on over to our Google Classroom page, and you're gonna see for Monday, if I kinda just really quick, open up our checklist. As you know, many um, many things on our checklist do stay the same, like the RAS Kids, the optional journal writing. Okay, but just so you know, like reading, like I said, um, there is a Google Classroom activity, but it does not need to be handed in. Math is an optional hand in. Um, there's gonna be a little quiz tomorrow. 
practicing the partial sums. Writing um, is going to be your Google slide that you're going to turn in. Foundations, there's going to be a Google slide that you're going to turn in. And science and social studies, there's going to be a Google Doc. So that's going to be due by the end of the week. So I'm going to go through some of this with you. First, we'll take a look at math. So again, up at the top, um, it's remember these are all one day lessons now. So we have 511 partial sums. You click view assignment, you're gonna see, watch the instructional video, complete the math journal page. Okay, so the math journal page is here. The answers are here as well because this is a little tricky. You know, you could have mom or dad check your work. Um, and that's that's it so you can if you want to submit this you can you don't have to now I'm going to just show you here's the video I'm going to just show you the first part of it one of the examples
Okay, so I'm going to stop the video there. Um, I just wanted to show you a example of it. Now, as you continue watching the video, I keep showing more and more helpful examples. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little preview. So pretty much you are doing the same thing, okay? So we're trying to just make it a little bit faster for you than drawing the base 10 blocks each time. Put them, put it in expanded form, expanded notation, whatever you choose to call it, means the same thing. Um, and you add them like that. So watch the rest of the video. You could rewatch that little beginning part again. The more you kind of watch it, the more it kind of gets stuck in your head there. All right, so I hope that video is helpful. And for writing, all right, so you wrote your problem on Friday. So today, you're gonna to describe how that problem gets solved. So there is um, a little short video, okay? And then there is a helpful picture that could show you how to stretch a sentence. So when you're thinking of your sentence, I waited in line. Okay, let's add an adjective. I waited in a lengthy line, right? It was, must have been a long line. Well, when did this happen? Last night, I waited in a lengthy line. Well, where were you? Last night at Walmart, I waited in a lengthy line. Well, how? Last night at Walmart, I waited impatiently in a lengthy line. Why? Last night at Walmart, I waited impatiently in a lengthy line because only one register was open for the entire store. So see how we just took, I waited in line, and we turned it into this. So we stretched our sentence. So there's a way to stretch it. You, you know, ask yourself, okay, let me add an adjective in, right? That's very descriptive. When, where, how, why, okay? So that's how you can grow your sentence. Then your Google slide that you have to turn in. Okay, look back at your plan, stretch out the solution. Okay, so there is an example. And um, this is where you can start writing. Okay, you're gonna describe how the problem gets solved. You should stretch this part out too. And if you need um, additional room, if you run out of room, there is a second part of it, okay? So you're just writing your solution here. And you can read that sample to help you. Help, screamed the man. Super Megan turned on her super strength powers. She tried to lift the pole, but it was so slippery from all the rain still pouring down. She turned around to the others and yelled, everyone grab on. Together, they lifted the pole and pulled the man from the car. So see how they stretched it? They didn't just say, you know, um, they lifted the pole and they pulled the man out, the end. So they really stretched it. I liked how they made it suspenseful. And they said, because it was raining, it was so slippery. So she had to turn around and she had to ask for the others to grab on, right? So. It really creates that element of suspense, and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, are, are they gonna solve this problem? What's gonna happen, right? So try to do that. You wanna stretch it out. And then just make sure, once again, when you press the view assignment, you turn, press this turn in button, okay? Try not to email it to me. And reading. Okay, so again, you're gonna see it's light gray because there's nothing to turn in. It's a material, it's not an assignment. So you can listen to Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, now there is a chart for you. Okay, so this is for you to view. So this has examples of all you know the functions of dialogues and here's examples of how it shows opinions and feelings right how it moves the plot forward so in red are all of your examples so that's the example doc and this one is the blank doc okay so you could put whatever you're reading um so whatever fiction book you decide to read at home you could write the title there and then you could show examples. All right, now you could turn this in if you want, but you don't 
have to, okay? This is an optional submission today, um, but you know, so important, we want you to read. Read, look for that dialogue, point it out, and see if you can figure out how that dialogue is being used. Okay, and then for foundations, all right, so there's a video. You're gonna watch the video, and now you're gonna think of your own long A words, and you're gonna sort them in the boxes. So this is a sorting activity. So you can make this bigger. All right, so you wanna make it bigger and Use, okay, so right says use your magnetic letters to build as many long A words as you can. Write the words in the chart. So we don't have our, magnet, our magnetic letters, but we're going to think of as many words as we can. And we have our chart. So these were the examples that was on the um, slideshow. Right, so here's acorn, plain, raid, playing. So you're going to click in your doc. Right, delete this and you're going to change it. Now, remember, when you go to submit this, make sure you're pressing that view assignment. Press this turn in button when you're done. That will go right to me in Google Classroom. Okay, so you don't have to share it, just press that turn in button. Then we are doing some science this week. So, week of May 11th. All right, so again, this is not due until the end of the week because you're gonna say, whoa, there's so many steps here, there's lots to read. Um, video's a little bit long, but it's not all due, so you could kind of even chunk it. If you wanna watch part of the video each day, you can do that, right? So the place that a plant or animal lives is called a habitat. A habitat is the physical area where the animal or plant lives. An organism's natural habitat has everything it needs to live. For example, a pond is a natural habitat to many different animals such as fish, birds, snakes, frogs, and other small mammals. But why do you think all these animals live in this habitat? Let's find out. For science this week, we will have the opportunity to recognize the habitats of plants and animals. We will also take a look at why and how these plants and animals live and grow there. The following steps are due by the end of the week, May 15th. You can complete one step a day or you may choose when to complete. So you're gonna listen to the Habitat Animal Atlas video, okay? It's a little lengthy. So if you wanna watch, you know, seven minutes a day, something like that, you can do that, you can chunk it. You're gonna go on to Raz Kids and read a book about one habitat that interests you most. So think forest, grasslands, deserts, mountains, Arctic, polar regions, oceans, fresh water. Use the book you picked and the videos that you watched to help you complete my habitat. Okay, there's another video here, different animal habitats, shorter one. Okay, so here's the Google Doc. And then you have IXL, it says heading J, traits, practice numbers one, two, and three. It tells you exactly what to click on. So my habitat. So think about whatever you listened to on Raz Kids, you're gonna write the habitat here. What are some animals that live there? Make a list. Some plants that grow there, make a list. An interesting fact about my habitat. Okay, you're gonna tell me a fun fact. On a separate piece of paper, draw a picture of your habitat. Be sure to include the animals and plants that live there. Okay, so you can, um, you could turn in this part of it. Your picture might be separate. Okay, if you want to even, um, you know, go to insert and find a picture of your habitat and like animals that live there. And if you want to do that, I will allow that. Um, so you can insert habitat, animal pictures, a plant picture, okay? And if you wanna on, if you, if you kinda keep scrolling down, add a new page, I will allow you to kind of do that too if you want instead of drawing. But you also totally can draw up to you. Um, either way is, 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 is good. So, let's just go back this way. 
All right, and um, that is everything for today. Don't forget, you have all the additional resources below. All of the morning meetings are recorded below um, with Mrs. Duraney's name, just in case you ever have to miss them. All the directions will be there from the morning meetings. All right, now I'm going to take your questions.